What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Honda Pilot, courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. They are getting a new building, by the way, so that's definitely exciting. But today we are in a super reliable three-row SUV, and for those of you who don't already know, I've owned several Hondas in the past, so I am quite partial to them. So what do you say, let's go ahead and just jump right into it, and as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Pilot. First one being the LX, starting at $31,550. Then you have the EX for $34,430. EXL for $37,860. Touring will start at $42,620. Then there is the Elite, which will start at $48,120. And lastly, the one we're in today, the Black Edition, starting at $49,620. And by the way, that is a new trim level for 2020 so i'm excited to be in that one for that reason but for all of those trim levels but the last two the elite and black edition will come standard with all-wheel drive for any of the other ones that was pricing for the front wheel drive to add all-wheel drive to any of those trim levels simply add two thousand dollars to any of those prices but so then when it comes to the power plant actually regardless of trim level that power plant will be the same powering the 2020 pilot will come from a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 Putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound-feet of torque available at 4,700 RPM. Power, like I said, is going to be sent to either front wheels or all wheels through Honda's intelligent all-wheel drive system. And that power is going to be sent to the ground through two different transmission options dependent upon the trim level. So, for instance, if you go with the LX, EX, or EXL, you will get a six-speed automatic. If you went with the Touring, Elite, or Black Edition, you will get a nine-speed automatic with power paddle shifters, which of course you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here. But regardless, when it comes to MPG numbers, they will differ ever so slightly between those two transmission setups. 18 in the city, 26 on the highway for the six speed, 19 city, 26 highway for the nine speed automatic. But either way, the Honda Pilot will take regular unleaded fuel, AKA 87 octane. So that's gonna be nice and save you a little bit of money at the pump there too. But so you guys know what we have to do next. Since I've now rambled off all of those specs, let's do a quick little acceleration test with the paddle shifters. I wanna see how quickly they react for us here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Honda Pilot here up to speed. <laughs> wow. All right, I'm digging it. <laughs> that felt pretty good for an SUV actually. I'm quite surprised. Acceleration, definitely no issues with merging onto the highway. I do wanna add something though. If you press that drive mode button again, that is actually a sport mode. So when I did that, it did immediately downshift for me. So it held the RPMs at a much higher level than it would otherwise, giving you more power on demand. As far as paddle shifters go, they were actually quite quick. It's kind of impressed. I played around with Honda's paddle shifters before and they haven't always been the quickest, but I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with the Honda Pilot's paddle shifter, so well done, Honda. But so then to take it back out of that manual shifting mode, if you wanted to do that, simply just press that drive mode button once again, and that gives full control back to the Pilot. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs. And as far as the braking feel goes, it's felt perfectly fine to me so far today. So definitely no issues there. Then touching a little bit on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, a multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, of course. And as far as the ride quality goes, it is pretty much as expected. So it's definitely soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely so right on par with the other SUVs in its class, no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it actually feels pretty good. I would say a little bit heavier of a weight than some of the other three row SUVs that I've tested, which is a good thing in my opinion. So steering feel is definitely quite nice as well, but one of the best parts about the driving dynamics, at least in my opinion, is in Pennsylvania, we do get some snow every now and then in the winter and the fall actually as well. So I do want to mention there are some traction management drive modes that come standard on the 2020 Honda Pilot. This is an awesome thing, giving you normal, of course, that's what it defaults to, but there's also snow, sand, and mud. Emphasis on snow, at least for us Pennsylvanians here. That's pretty cool. But by simply pressing that button, that will give you a couple different options there. And that's essentially going to 
adjust the throttle response, shift points, and the all-wheel drive system engagement as well. Touching on cabin noise a little bit, it is definitely a quiet ride on the interior here. The only thing that you may be hearing is the air conditioner because it is getting a little bit hotter, so I wanted to have that on as well as the ventilated seats also cooling me down quite nicely. But nonetheless, cabin noise is definitely quite nice. And I did want to mention contributing to that if you were to go with the EXL trim level and up, you will also get acoustic glass on the windshield. So that is going to help absorb some of that exterior sound as well. So that is definitely a plus in my book. But then touching on visibility a little bit, I will say there are some third row headrests. If you have them up, they will hinder visibility ever so slightly. But other than that, quite honestly, the general rule is the more boxy of an SUV it is, the better visibility you're going to have. So comparatively speaking to some of the others in its class, visibility is definitely quite nice because of its shape. So that is a plus in my book. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the exterior on the 2020 Pilot because like I said, we do have the all new trim level for 2020. I did want to touch a little bit on that as well. We'll of course go over everything else about the exterior too. All right, so when it comes to the exterior of the 2020 Honda Pilot, since we have the black edition, let me just sum this edition up. As far as exterior styling goes, anywhere you would previously see chrome or silver accents, simply replace them with black accents and you have the black edition more or less along with of course this cool black edition lettering in the front grille. That is a of course, another addition to the black edition as expected, but anywho, putting this specific trim level aside up front, you will find LED low beam headlights for every single trim level with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED fog lights are gonna come standard on the EX trim level and up. And that is of course gonna be found just below there, but full LED headlights are gonna come with the touring trim level and up. That is LED low beam and high beam. And the housings for the headlights are actually gonna differ slightly as well, depending if you go with the full LED headlights or the low beam LED headlights. So what you are looking at right now, of course, is the full LED headlight housing look. So I did just wanna mention that. So LED daytime running lights will also come standard. And of course, front and center, you will find that super large Honda logo definitely looks good up there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one taking a look up top roof rails are going to come standard with the touring trim level and up that is of course what you were looking at right now just below that rear privacy glass that is going to come standard for every single trim level chrome window surrounds are going to come standard for every single trim level but the black edition so therefore you are seeing black window surrounds on this one as opposed to the chrome that you would typically otherwise find. But taking a look at the side mirrors, body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come standard on every single trim level. If you go with the EX trim level and up, that is gonna give you heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals. So that is of course what you were looking at right now. Then zooming out a little bit, let's take a look at the wheel setup here. 18 inch alloy wheels will come standard with the LX, EX and EXL trim levels. 20 inch alloy wheels are gonna come with the Touring, Elite, and Black Edition. And of course, those three trims, of course, will vary slightly in design, but they will all be 20 inches as far as the size goes. Also wanted to mention chrome accents on the side skirts can be found with the EX trim level and up. And as I previously mentioned, those chrome accents therefore are replaced with black accents since we do have the Black Edition. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the pack. You will find a shark fin antenna up top there. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come standard on all trim levels just below that a rear window wiper led brake lights actually standard on every single trim level so well done honda for that and of course just below those taillights you will actually find trim level badging back there as well and just below all of it you will find a single exhaust outlet for every single trim level one of the things i wish honda did on their suvs is put dual exhaust outlets since it has a v6 and also have them exposed i've always liked that look a little better but nonetheless you guys know what we have to do next as as always here is that exhaust clip and so but now since we all round back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate there is a power tailgate if you were to go with the ex trim level and up and a hands-free tailgate if you went with the touring trim level and up. So that is definitely pretty nice as well. And you can actually push the button on the key fob. That is another way you can open that up if you wanted to. But once opened up, as far as cargo capacity goes, behind that third row, you're gonna find 16.5 cubic feet. If you wanted to fold that down behind the second row, it's gonna come in at 46.8 cubic feet. And with all rows 
folded, that is going to give you 83.9 cubic feet. So good bit of space back there. For reference, I have a three row Hyundai Santa Fe, which comes in at an even 80 cubic feet. So it is a good bit of space is what I'm trying to get at there. So that is definitely quite nice. We'll also find a cargo area light back there, four cargo tie down anchors, some grocery hooks, and there is some hidden storage back there as well. So a bunch of pluses when it comes to the cargo area. But now let's make our way to the rear leg room. Third row is going to come in at 31.9 inches. So definitely kind of tight back there. For reference, I am an even six feet tall. I'll give this a shot for you guys. This is how much space I have back there. But I will say one thing you guys are going to notice in a second here. Honda is excelling at is putting a ton of cup holders in their SUVs. For instance, four cup holders for the third row passengers there. Making your way up to the second row, you're going to find six cup holders and 38.4 inches of rear legroom. Again, for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there, but six cup holders for two passengers in the second row is, is three beverages per person. So quite a bit of cup holders there. Also some pluses for those rear passengers. There is rear ventilation for all rows. Second row sunshades. If you go with the EXL trim level and up, and this is a major plus if you have a newborn, you're gonna find this out if you just had your first newborn, that sun will beam into their eyes and they will squint like there's no tomorrow if you don't have sunshades back there. And yes, you can buy them at Walmart, but they are not gonna be as nice or cover as much of an area as they otherwise would if you got them directly from the factory. So again, second row sunshades for the EXL trim level and up also heated second row seats for the touring trim level and up and by the way when it comes to the seating configurations that center row will come with a bench seat giving you seating up to eight for the lx ex and exl trim levels and it will come with captain's chairs aka seating for seven if you were to go with the elite or black edition but i left a trim level out there the touring trim level can actually be had either way with a bench seat or the captain's chairs in case you were curious but there is of course plenty of hookups back there including a 115 volt power outlet so girls you could literally plug in a hair dryer in that second row if you wanted to which is kind of funny but also usb charging ports back there auxiliary port there's a ton of connection hookups but perhaps the coolest part is the rear entertainment system can be found with the touring trim level and up and that is going to fold down from the roof and of course you could play blu-rays on that if you wanted to but you can also connect it to your smartphone to play youtube videos if you wanted to for instance some car reviews maybe from youtube on that rear entertainment system or whatever but but anywho i did think that was pretty cool but now making your way to the front seats cloth seating is going to come with the lx and ex trim levels you will find leather seating if you want with the exl trim level and up EX trim level and up is going to give you a 10-way power driver's seat with power lumbar. EXL is going to add a power passenger seat and you will find heated front seats with the EX trim level and up and ventilated front seats as well if you went with the elite trim level and up. But then taking a look up front at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the EXL trim level and up. And in case you guys are curious, the EXL, L meaning leather, of course. And if you wanted that steering wheel heated, simply go with the elite trim level and up. But then now let's make our way to the startup. Actually, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your high Honda logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock that button to pop the rear hatch and actually there is that circular button that is going to be your remote start as well so that is pretty cool that we have that there but either way every single trim level is going to give you a bright red push button start paying homage to the old Honda S2000 which I learned to drive manual on. I absolutely love that car, but either way, all you're gonna wanna do is simply just put your foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And but so then once started up, there is a large digital display front and center. Fuel information is gonna be all the way on your right. Engine temp is on your left, but front and center, you're gonna find your RPMs at the very top. There is gonna be a digital readout just below that. And to control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side there. But through that, you can check out your trip information, Bluetooth information, navigation information, when you need your next oil change. Essentially, there's a ton of stuff you can check out up there, but let's make our way now to overall interior quality. The power moonroof that you're looking at right now, that is gonna come with the EXL trim level and up. And in this black edition that we have today, there is a power moonroof for the rear passengers as well. And that actually goes all the way into the third row. It is a massive rear power moonroof. 
I absolutely love it. It lets in so much more lighting for videos like this, but that is super awesome. Also ambient lighting is gonna come with the touring trim level and up. And that touring trim level and up is also gonna give you illuminated cup holders to go along with that. If you wanted home link controls for up to three different garage doors, you're gonna want the EXL trim level and up. Sunglass holder with a rear conversation mirror, Honda calls it. That is an interesting name for that. That is gonna come with the EX trim level and up. And essentially that conversation mirror that is like the school bus mirror where you can kind of spy on the rear passenger. So that's gonna be there for you. Tri-zone climate control is gonna come with the EX trim level and up. And of course, since we have the black edition, there are plenty of black accents throughout this one, including black edition lettering at the top part of the seats. Also found that pretty cool. Just in front of that sunglass holder, there is actually LED interior lighting. Also was a big fan of that. And just in front of all the gear selector buttons, there is going to actually be a wireless phone charger on the black edition that we have today, along with the 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, dual cup holders just behind that, and an absolutely massive storage area right behind those cup holders, giving you once again another 12 volt power outlet and another USB charging port. So and there is also a sliding tray within that massive storage area as well. But when it's closed, it does have kind of a cool texture to the top of it. It's like a, a red blackish kind of texture. So I do want to mention that it is pretty cool. But let's now make our way to the tech display up front for the LX trim level. You're going to get a five inch LCD screen. If you went with the EX trim level and up, however, you will find an eight inch high resolution color touchscreen display, which of course is what you're looking at right now. But Either way, you will still get Bluetooth and audio streaming regardless of what screen size you go with. But if you went with this eight inch color touchscreen display, you're gonna also get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And that's the one that you wanna get because that gives you free navigation through your smartphone as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there. And if you wanted factory navigation, if you live in the mountains, maybe go with the touring trim level and up. And you can of course check out your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find seven speakers with a subwoofer and 215 watts if you went with the LX, EX, and EXL. However, if you went with the touring trim level and up, you're gonna get a 10 speaker sound system with the subwoofer, 590 watts, which pretty much means that we do have to test this one out today. So. What do you say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio here, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Love, love this sound system we have with the pilot here today. That was an extended version. I only played a short clip of what I actually listened to. That is how much I liked the sound system. Not, of course, my favorite I've ever tested. That goes to Bowers and Wilkins, but still an amazing sound system on the Black Edition trim level that we have today. But so then last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the 2020 pilot in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me first start by saying the Honda Pilot did get a IIHS top safety pick rating, which is excellent. Well done Honda for that. Front side and side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system. This stuff is all pretty basic at this point, but where Honda really shines when it comes to safety is something called Honda Sensing, which comes standard on every single trim level. And this is going to include a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure, warning and automatic high beams a lot of those safety features you do have to pay extra for with other manufacturers so well done Honda for that and in addition to that if you want with the EX trim level and up that is also going to add a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert and so but anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you like be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button if you are into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.